Thanks for tuning in to this edition of How To Q. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build a console table with this 10 inch by two inch by eight foot board. Just remember 10 inches is really nine inches and a quarter. <laughs> That's gonna be key later on. Um, first, you wanna look at where you're going to put this, measure it, I'll show you that. I'll also show you how I added a outlet and some hairpin legs to make this a modern West Elm, I'm calling it, uh, console table. So stay tuned. We're gonna start by measuring our space, and then I'll take this into that wood shop I talked about and start cutting it down. So hope you enjoy it. It turned out pretty well. So the table's gonna go behind this sofa. I start by measuring the height. Most couches height is 31 inches, so that's what I'm gonna shoot for. I don't include the cushions in that height. And then I'm going to measure the length. I'm not going to make it the entire length of the couch. I'm going to make it about 80 inches. Now moving into that wood shop I talked about, I'm going to cut this down to the 80 inches. And then I want to square off the edges of this board. So I'm going to cut off a quarter inch from each side. So now we're down to eight inches and three quarters. That's not the exact board, but you get the idea. Many of you probably don't have a planer, but since I do, I went ahead and planed this down just to really, really smooth it out. And this is just a sander on steroids. If you have an orbital sander, you can do the same thing. This is just really quick as you can see. You can see how warped this piece of wood is. Now I'm gonna start working on the rails. So I cut off the warped part, and then I am now cutting these two pieces of wood down to length. Um, I used three feet, and then I'm gonna put a 30 degree angle on each end. And if you don't have a compound miter saw, no problem. You can do this on a table saw. You can do this with a hand saw. There are a lot of different options. I just had access to this equipment, which was nice. And as you can tell, I'm stacking these. That makes it a lot easier to make sure they're the exact same size. I ordered my hairpin legs from Etsy. They were 30 inches. I got them home. I put them on that board. This is when that nine and a quarter inch measurement made a difference. Ouch, I came up a little too short. So what I did was I found a piece of scrap wood that I luckily had. I added it to the edge. I'm gonna glue it, clamp it. I got those clamps from a big box store for $60. I used them overnight and I returned them the next day so I could do it all for free. Then I went back to the wood shop. I planed it, I sanded it, everything I'd previously done. Now it's time to get ready to install that outlet. Now onto the outlet. This is what I'm trying to achieve. I want the face of the outlet to be flush with the top of the console table. I'm only showing you this because it'll, it'll help make sense when I'm actually building it. Here's the back of the outlet box. So the way I achieved all of this is I first measured it out, then I traced around the actual outlet box that I was using. I hashed out the where the face of the outlet is gonna poke through and then I will countersink the back where the outlet box is going to go. I used a drill press with a Forster bit to poke two holes all the way through the board. That allows me to get a jigsaw and eventually a router bit into the board. This will all make sense as the video continues. You could have probably just jigsawed this whole thing. The Forrester bit just helps get out some of that. Now I'm gonna take this top bearing, which is important, top bearing flush trim bit, and really snug up to those lines to make it a really clean line. Here's a template that I built, and now I'm just adjusting to make sure that bearing goes along the template and the rest of the bit does the work. My 
template wasn't perfect, so now I'm just clearing out some of the edges so I can fit in my outlet, which you'll see me testing a few times. Uh, finally got it, but uh, it fit perfectly. Now I'm setting the depth of the router so when I cut out the back of the board with that router bit, when the outlet box is in, that outlet is flush with the top. So that's the depth I've set on this router to achieve that. changed out the router bit and now I'm just putting a tapered edge on the top of the table. Now onto the rails, it's time to glue it, screw it, and the way I did this was I used a Forster bit. I cut down deep enough into the rails so my two and a half inch wood screws wouldn't poke through the top. I also drilled pilot holes before I screwed these in so I wouldn't split the wood. Because there was only a quarter inch left to the top of the piece of wood, I couldn't screw in the outlet box to secure it. So I basically used some scrap wood that I'll screw in later and you'll see that in the project. Now it's time to prep, prep for paint and primer. One thing that I really focused on on this project was doing the 110 grit, the 220 grit, and the 320 grit and do a lot of sanding and you'll see me putting in some wood filler here. I really wanted to be wanted it to be a seamless project and uh, obviously very smooth. Um, I've really never painted and sanded and painted again, um, but I had the time, so I really took my time with this just to basically get a really nice smooth finish um, for the whole project. This is the primer that I decided to use. Um, probably overkill on the primer, you'll see that. I actually did two coats of primer and again, I sanded in between both and there's my 320 grit sandpaper that I used. Um, I also used a paint and primer Rust-Oleum Rust product that you'll see later. Um, but again, overkill, I just really wanted to see how this would turn out if I took my time and did all the sanding that I talked about and obviously the multiple coats of paint. Now that priming is done, finally time for my black semi-gloss paint. After using spray paint on this project, I probably wouldn't do it again. I just wasn't able to get a really even coat of paint. I definitely would use a roller next time on a project like this. Now one of my favorite tools, a coat hanger, I use this to make hooks to hang the legs. Now on to painting the legs and achieving that West Elm look. I highly recommend this metallic brass paint from Ace. I got the idea for the legs and the paint from Kylie Ray. I follow her on Instagram and definitely check out her website. I gave the legs a couple coats and I went ahead and slowed it down here just to show some of the overspray you get. So definitely get in a well ventilated area when using spray paint. Painting is pretty much done. I finally am getting to the point where I'm attaching the legs. Here I'm just measuring it out, making sure it's centered, and then I'm going to attach those legs. After planing down the wood, I had a little under an inch left of that wood. That's why I've got these thick number 14 screws. Um, I barely drilled those in to the legs so I could level out the console table. 
Now it's time to secure those screws, add the shims, really level it out. Then all that's really left is attaching the outlet box to the back of the table. I just used two pieces of scrap wood and screwed those in and I'm pretty much done. Before I show you this in its actual space, I wanted to pull it out and talk about it really quickly. I love the design, the way it came out eventually. It was a lot more simpler than I wanted to, but it still looks great. The hairpin legs, although I spent some money on it, they look great. I love the paint choice. Um, definitely use that if you're going for that West Elm look. The outlet took the longest because I thought it was important to integrate it into the piece of furniture. I didn't want a faceplate sticking up like you see a lot of people do. I wanted someone to be able to put a runner on here or even a plant or something if they really didn't want to plug in anything. Um, so it's very functional. It fits perfectly in its space. I'll show you that now. of how to cue. I did not include how I wired this outlet. You can click on this video and find out how I did that. And please, please, please subscribe. I promise I'm always including more content, better quality video. I'm learning a lot about videoing. And as always, a like at the end of this. And please comment below, good and bad. Thanks for watching How To Cue. We'll see you next time.